you know, the vast majority of councillors are not only working part time, um, they are trying to do the right thing um, and are, 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 are sort of, you know, trying to give something back to their community. So um, to your point about culture, yes, there will be examples of rotten cultures developing um, and that's what you'd expect with you know, several hundred different organisations, local, local uh, authorities around the country at different levels. Um, so there's going to be a, a, a spectrum. Um, but it is just worthwhile pointing out that, you know, for, for an awful lot of them, there is, you know, that they are, they are run and led and um, peopled by individuals who are trying to do the right thing and, and are sort of you know, trying to be honest and, and all those all those sensible things. But, and again, this, this comes back to your point, this is absolutely critical because the, you know, the planning decision, permission being granted, is one of the biggest public creations of value in the moment when public when permission is granted it transforms the economics of a piece of land or a site um, in some cases by you know, a, by a hundred fold by two hundred fold or more depending on what the current level of permission is and what the permission is being granted to and there are in, there are huge amounts of money either invested on speculation um, or in trying to crystallize that value so it is clearly an area where the corruption risks are just inherently high um, just before I go on it's it's, I think, interesting to just consider that some of the uh, proposals which are currently going through Parliament and being considered by Parliament for changes and reforms to the planning law, particularly around some of the things about per permitted development and development codes and minimum space standards and so forth, um, may actually improve things a little bit by, uh, by having a pre-approval status effectively, saying if your development um, it's mainly for small developments, the permitted development stuff. Um, but if your change to, to a particular site satisfies the following um, preconditions and satisfies the local council's development code, which is set out over here on you know, is publicly visible, um, then it will be um, it will be approved. Now that reduces dramatically the nexus in which corruption can try and get a purchase. Um, it isn't complete. It certainly doesn't apply to some of the biggest. Um, uh, decisions, um, but that one change um, for an awful lot of the smaller decisions could make an enormous difference just on its own. And um, there are other uh, things which are being considered as well, which are not yet uh, uh, you know, not not yet firm proposals, but are being debated certainly about trying to change uh, some of the section 106 and some of the community infrastructure levy proposals in order to capture some of the value that is being created when you make the planning decision and grant permission. And again, if you can turn those, some of those into a pre-approval um, tariff, again, it reduces the scope for uh, discussion, it reduces the scope for, um, for lobbying, it reduces the scope for uh, negotiation, and again, just shrinks the available area in which corruptors can try and operate. And so there are some systematic things, there are some design things that we can design um, safety into the process um, some of which are already underway, some of which are still in the realms of debate, but which I don't think we should lose sight of because that kind of j just reduces the overall risk level before we even get started. Um, final thought I will, I will just um, add and then I will, I will hand the floor over to, to others. An awful lot of the risks that Rachel and Transparency International just outlined um, are not new. They are risks which um, Parliament, for example, has tried to grapple with with varying degrees of success over decades, and there have been examples. Of, you know, that's that's why you have registers of registers of MPs' interests. That's why ministers have a ministerial code and have to have minister, meetings minuted, um, and all those other things. And their and their their meeting schedule has to be published as well. Um, so this isn't a set of problems to which there are no answers. There are lots of answers out there, um, and there is good practice which can be already copied or, or just cloned for anybody who wants to do it. Rachel gave a really good example um, of, I think it was Portsmouth Council, wasn't it, Rachel? You, you mentioned where, which um, reports on, you know, even, even, um, even phone conversations between councillors. Um, so this isn't something where we have to invent a brand new corpus of answers. They exist, some of them are, um, exist in, in Westminster, some of them exist in other councils, high functioning councils around the country. Um, and so therefore, there's an enormous amount of progress that we can make just by getting most people to do what some of the better ones are doing already. Um, and, uh, and actually, I think most of them will want to, 
because it protects the councillors themselves. It protects their personal reputations. It protects their financial reputations as well. Um, and you know, most ministers, if you ask them, do you want to have a civil service that will flag up to you when there may be a problem here and tell you in advance so that you can recuse yourself or set a step away from something or make sure you do something in a um, in a way which is going to avoid a problem before it ever happens most ministers will say hell yeah i really want that because it makes my life safer it makes my job easier to do and it just means that i'm much more likely to get to the right answer cleanly and um, councillors are the same um, councillors will have exactly the same motivations and exactly the same fears as well so if we can come up with something which is pre-baked as good practice, and as I said, it exists already um, in councils like Portsmouth and many others as well, then I think that uh, this is not something which is a rocket science. This is just a question of finding um, good practice and spreading it. And that won't be a perfect answer. I'm sure there will still be things which Rachel will gnash her, gnash her teeth over and I will gnash my teeth over as well. And, but my goodness me, wouldn't it be great to just pull up the skirts of the, um, of the long tail, of, uh, you know, of shorten that long tail of, uh, of, of poor performing um, you know, high risk councils and raise that average score from 38 to something higher. That would just be an enormous and a welcome step forward on its own.